The current AI chatbots are good at everything, except for being practical. And it's really frustrating that it cannot be easily utilized consistently in work settings because it will just hallucinate the most out-of-pocket thing you can imagine. And since we don't have the patience to wait for the mega corpse to train an even more powerful AI, we need ways to utilize the chatbots we have right now to get ahead of the curve before AGI replaces us to write email slot. So there's this short-term workaround called RAG, which stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. In all of the latest research and even in services like ChatGPT or Claude, RAG has drastically improved the performance and usability for these LLMs. Because instead of spawning the key information in a neural network that has compressed the data, with RAG, it retrieves accurate information from a collection of uncompressed documents separately stored that even the LLM may not have been trained on. This method would provide results that are both cost-effective and accurate without needing to train or fine-tune the LLM that would have cost tens of thousands. And remember the function web browsing that a lot of chatbots have? This function is also an extension of RAG, which makes RAG perfect when you need to use a large amount of documents as reference that cannot fit within the context window of an LLM. So with these insane benefits, why would it be a short-term solution? Well, before we can answer that, we first need to understand how it generally works. Let's take a naive RAG as an example. Oh yeah, keep in mind the field is still a bit new, so the process can be differentiated a bit differently from place to place. But I would decompose them into three main stages, index, retrieval, and generation. In the index stage, you will be indexing your documents for the AI to easily retrieve it later. This index process can vary, but the most common way is to divide the documents into meaningful chunks and store it in a vector form that can be searched easily. This stage usually doesn't repeat once all your documents has been indexed and stored within a vector database. This then brings us to the retrieval stage, where we will need to retrieve the information for the LLM to use. To know what information the LLM needs to retrieve, we need to first look at the user input to see what the query is about so we can bring out the most relevant data from the vector database for the LLM to work with. While there is the classic word frequency matching between the input query and the documents to retrieve the ideal information, it still can capture the semantic information between the words. So a BERT model that is an encoder-only transformer is used to encode and provide measurements for the semantic similarities between the documents and the input query. So by measuring their vector distances, we can find the most semantic relevant information from a document and provide it to the LLM for further processing. Which brings us to the last stage, the generation stage. This stage relies on the LLM to utilize the retrieved content and the input content to formulate coherent and contextually relevant responses. It needs to strike a balance between following the information on the reference document and transforming into a response that answers the input query. So without any fine tuning, the LLM would be able to respond to questions about your documents with RAG. And now you would realize that with that many components, RAG could have a single point of failure. There are now various moving parts like how you index information, how you retrieve them, and how good the model is at blending and presenting the output that have the power to affect the quality of RAG. So it's kind of reasonable to call it a short-term solution because it is certainly a hacky way to bypass LLM's limitations by introducing more unstable variables. But being hacky about it kind of transforms RAG into a whole new field of research with a more applied mentality rather than a theoretical one, as a better architectural model would be more of a long-term solution. So naturally, this simple pipeline has evolved into something even more complex, which brings us to the million dollar question, what is the current meta for RAG? Okay, there are way too many variants right now and sometimes it boils down to what works the best with your own data, but here's how the meta roughly looks like. Starting from the indexing stage, other than chunking the document semantically using LLM to better organize the information retrieved, a trainable embedding model which is to convert text to vectors can be used to better connect the input query and the relevant documents when storing and comparing them within a vector database. So for things like indentation where it holds a more significant meaning in coding compared to your typical writing, an embedding model that is fine-tuned on coding would be much more mindful about this detail when converting the text into vector encoding. So later on when the AI is retrieving, the influence of indentations is much more respected. Another really new and promising method is something called graph rag. This technique uses a knowledge graph and utilizes LLM to extract entities, relationships, and key claims from your documents. Then the hierarchical clustering with the Leiden technique is used to organize the graph, which can be easily visualized for better traceability and is much more explainable and auditable than looking at a vector database. Which brings us to the retrieval stage, where the model now can not only retrieve the most relevant information with the input query, but also obtain the context of the retrieved content thanks to the knowledge graph by using the structured 
data previously generated. This makes mistakes much more traceable and preventable as answers that might be contextually irrelevant to the input query can be ignored. But for the model to retrieve information accurately, the previously mentioned embedding model would need to encode the input query too, right? However, not all the input query is needed for search. Like the greetings in the inputs, the next line notation or end of sentence token should be completely left out. So an input query rewriting LLM would be here to help to condense or even transform the query to its key information that is then encoded into vector form to be compared and searched within the vector database or the knowledge graph to retrieve more accurate information. Additionally, a hybrid search can be used in the meantime like the FAISS nearest neighbor plus word frequency to increase the chance of getting the desired retrieval. Optionally, a web search can be done at this stage too, which is really useful to ensure any time-sensitive information or citations are correct. And this is also the part where you can literally insert any APIs. Then in the final stage, which is generation, something called re-ranking is often used now where instead of retrieving only once, you would instead retrieve top K results in the retrieving stage and pass the top K results into a re-ranking LLM model to see which results are actually the most relevant that would be able to answer the input query. And the re-rank model can also be fine-tuned to be domain-specific. Another function called AutoCut would also be used to remove unrelated retrieved results based on similarity distance gaps. And sometimes, the content-relevant score measured by the re-rank model would have a threshold in place, so if the retrieved information is not as relevant, it will force the model to say they don't know anything about the input query instead of hallucinating or providing bad results. So yeah, that's roughly the current meta of RAG. But since I've only been talking about the conceptual ideas, here are some relevant sources you can use to build your own RAG. For a more general RAG framework, Llama Index is a more popular one. It also has libraries like Llama Parse, which is good for organizing your documents for retrievals. For the embedding models, there are a lot of fine-tuned ones on Hugging Face which are free download, so pick one at your own cost. For a RAG LLM model, Command R models from Cohere are some of the best RAG optimized models, and they also offer some really easy to use re-rank and embedding models, but of course they're not free. For GraphRag, you can check out Microsoft's official GitHub and yoink their codes from there. And I think Llama Index also has an implementation, so you can check that out. You can also check out RAGAS, which is a framework that helps you evaluate your RAG pipelines. So on the topic of RAG locally, I want to talk about an incredible application that can boost your workflow, that is ThinkBuddy. It's not just another AI app, it's a full-fledged Mac OS AI lab for 10x devs like you guys. What sets ThinkBuddy apart is its LLM Remix feature. Imagine combining the strengths of GPT-4, Clotsana 3.5, and Gemini Pro in one response by collecting the best parts of each answer, and that's exactly what ThinkBuddy does. You get access to 10 plus leading models without any extra subscriptions. But the deep Mac OS integration is the actual game changer. You can capture your screen and ask questions to AI, use customizable hotkeys to utilize prompt templates, and basically get AI to help you instantly anytime. For example, assume that I have a hotkey set up to analyze code, just select the text, then use the shortcut, and ThinkBuddy provides suggestions on how to improve it. The voice input powered by OpenAI's Whisper lets you dictate while multitasking. It even supports 80 plus languages with great accuracy. And they even fix Whisper's output by using GPT-4's advanced reasoning. And for you developers and researchers, ThinkBuddy handles PDF, DocX, XLSX, and many other file types. You can ask questions to LLMs by sourcing documents, and you can see responses of each model and the remix answers in under 10 seconds. And don't worry about privacy, all chat storage is local. Plus, they're working on integrating local LLMs soon, which makes processing even faster and more secure. Now, here's a deal that you don't want to miss. ThinkBuddy is offering an exclusive lifetime deal, but it's only available for August and it's closing very soon. The regular lifetime deal sale is over, but you can use the code BICLOUD with the link down in the description to get 30% off, bringing the price down to just 130 bucks, which is basically around the same price if you have ChatGPT and Claude for over three months. And this code is only limited to the first 50 sales. And if you're still on the fans, they offer a 30 day no questions asked refund policy. And ThinkBuddy also has a free basic tier for you to try out and their basic version is only 10 bucks a month, still cheaper than subscribing to multiple AI services separately. I've been also trying out ThinkBuddy for a while now, and so far I found it extremely fitting for my workflow. So if you want to experience this AI powerhouse, check them out using the link down in the description. And thank you ThinkBuddy.ai for sponsoring this video. If you like what I talked about today, you should definitely check out my newsletter. On there, I will be breaking down the latest hottest research papers coming out left and right for you on a weekly basis. So even if I am late to the news or don't have the chance to talk about it in a video, you would 
percent catch the most juicy stuff on there but anyways a big shout out to andrew laschelius chris ladue alex j alex marie's Miguelim, Deegan, Fifel, Robert Zaviasa, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.